Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. Behind me is Dr. Andrew Wakefield. Dr. Wakefield is the author of the now infamous 1998 study in the British medical journal Lancet linking the MMR vaccination to autism. As a result of this study, which enjoyed worldwide press coverage, hundreds of thousands of parents are now vaccine hesitant. And as a result, vaccine preventable diseases are rearing their ugly head again. Recently, we had 83 children die of measles in Samoa. We have periodic outbreaks of measles, pertussis, and hepatitis A in my home state of Michigan. Now, in part one of the series, we talked about the study itself and how when he did not find his required conditions for his pet theory, specifically neurologic problems starting within a week or two after an MMR vaccination with findings of colitis. He simply falsified his data. In this week's episode, we're going to look at what he put these children through and the reasons that he did it. So let's cue up the music and get started. Now, this series of videos is based on a series of articles by investigative journalist Daniel Deere in the British Medical Journal. The link will be in the description of this video. Now, child number two was the six-year-old son of an anti-vaccine advocate in the United Kingdom, a member of a group called JABS. Now, like all of the children in this series, this child underwent a diagnostic series of testing at the direction of Richard Barr, the attorney that was planning the class action lawsuit against the vaccine manufacturer of the MMR, who was working with Dr. Wakefield, and as it turns out, was paying Dr. Wakefield nearly $700,000 for this study. Now, this child underwent a series of tests when he was admitted to the hospital. Now, the tests include an MRI of the brain. Now, while this is a stock image off the internet, just to kind of give you an idea of what an MRI is, as you see, it's a very large piece of equipment. Uh, this one is decorated up a little bit. I don't know whether or not the one they put this autistic six-year-old child into was. But you put your head in this thing, it goes in for a period of time, the thing rattles and clacks. It's really not all that bad. It may be a little frightening for a child. Now, the next test the child underwent was called an EEG with evoked potentials. In this test, what they do is they put sensors on the skin of the head, and then they show images to the child and measure the response of the brainwave. Again, relatively non-invasive procedure. Now, after this, they did blood work, including a Schilling's test, which is a radioactive test, urine testing, and then they started doing some invasive procedures. The first one is something called a lumbar puncture. And in case you've never seen what a lumbar puncture is, that you take a large steel needle and put it in the space between the third and fourth vertebrae and enter the spinal canal and draw out spinal fluid. It's not a comfortable procedure. The final test that they did was something called a colonoscopy, where a fiber optic tube is inserted into the rectum and then fed all the way through the large intestine until it reaches the ileum, which is the end of the small intestine down by the appendix. This is not a comfortable procedure, although they generally sedate people for this. I've personally had one of these things, really wasn't all that bad. I asked for a lot of drugs. Next, Dr. Wakefield was not against all vaccinations. As a matter of fact, he was primarily concerned with the measles, mumps, and rubella trivalent vaccination, which was the subject of his study. He didn't seem to have a problem with a univalent vaccination against just measles. As a matter of fact, he had applied for a patent for a univalent measles vaccination with the idea that once his study came out, the MMR would be withdrawn from service and his univalent measles vaccination would be right there to step up and protect the children of the world making him a handsome prophet in the meantime. Now, how did all this start? There was an attorney in London by the name of Richard Barr, who was engaged by an anti-vaccination group called JABS to look into the possibility of filing a class action lawsuit against the makers of the MMR vaccination. Mr. Barr engaged Dr. Wakefield to conduct a study to provide evidence for this eventual lawsuit. Now, these children were recruited by Mr. Barr, the attorney, and this anti-vaccination group called JABS. Based on the criteria, they had an MMR vaccination, they had bowel problems, and they had autism. 
Mr. Barr would review these patients and for appropriate ones that he felt might meet criteria for the lawsuit, he would refer them on to Dr. Wakefield. For his efforts, Dr. Wakefield was paid nearly $700,000 by the law firm. So let's just quickly review the timeline here. In 1995, Andrew Wakefield applied for a patent for an immunodiagnostic test for Crohn's disease. This test had two parts to it. First of all, it was a proposed diagnostic test for Crohn's disease. And second, it did this by detecting measles virus, suggesting that the patient then developed Crohn's disease from the presence of these measles viruses and specifically not the wild type of measles, but the measles from the MMR vaccination. And it proposed a way to tell them apart. And there are the dates. As you see, the initial patent was filed in March of 1995. It was published in October of 1996, and it's currently abandoned. In February of 1996, he begins an association with attorney Richard Barr, to work on a class action lawsuit against a vaccine manufacturer over the MMR vaccination. He develops this theory of a vaccine-induced Crohn's disease causing autism. Barr engages him and pays him eventually up to $700,000 to find the evidence of this syndrome that he has. Meanwhile, Dr. Wakefield patents a univalent measles vaccination, which does not cause Crohn's disease or autism, designed to replace the MMR vaccination when the MMR vaccination is withdrawn from the market over safety concerns with autism based on the results of the paper that he, pu he publishes in February of 1998. Now, as you may recall from the first episode of this series, Dr. Wakefield's theory if you want to call it that, was the children got the MMR vaccination. That caused them to develop Crohn's disease. And the release of inflammatory markers from the Crohn's disease caused inflammation in the brain and autism. Now, as the study went on with these 12 children that were handpicked by the attorney and Dr. Wakefield for the study, they discovered that none of them had Crohn's disease. So Dr. Wakefield changed his theory to say that it was enteritis or colitis rather than specifically Crohn's disease. In colitis and enteritis, the hallmark is diarrhea. None of these children had chronic diarrhea. Many of them had chronic constipation, which goes against the diagnosis. When these 12 children underwent colonoscopy, none were found to have Crohn's. And as I recall, 11 of the 12 were found to have no evidence of colitis. So what did they do? They simply changed the diagnosis upon their review. The third thing that they had to have was a proximal cause between the MMR vaccination and the onset of symptoms, generally within 1 to 14 days is what they reported with an average of 6.3 days. As it turns out, 5 of the 12 children had pre-existing conditions. And in many of the other cases, the symptoms of the autism were not noted until many months after the vaccination. So again, they simply changed the date of onset. They tried to find something right after the vaccination that they could say was the first sign of the problem and then simply ran with it. Now, there are a lot of behind the scenes things going on with this. So Dr. Wakefield has this idea that somehow the MMR vaccination causes Crohn's disease. He goes to work with a law firm to take the MMR vaccination off the market through a class action lawsuit, claiming a link between the MMR vaccination and autism. Dr. Wakefield not only can diagnose Crohn's disease and presumably autism with his immunodiagnostic, he's developed a new measles vaccination to replace the MMR. Now, there's actually more to it than that. He also set up a laboratory in Dublin, Ireland to do diagnostics and read these tests that he had invented, develop the vaccination, and market it. 
Well, in our first episode, we talked about the flawed study that Wakefield tried to use to provide a link between the MMR vaccination, autism, and Crohn's disease. In this episode, we talked about the testing that he put these children through to try and prove his theory and how he planned to financially gain by developing a test for a measles-induced Crohn's disease and a link to autism and how he looked to replace the MMR vaccination with a vaccination that he was patenting prior to the start of the study. We talked about how he teamed up with attorney Richard Barr and the anti-vax group JABS to conspire to get the MMR vaccination taken off the market due to this supposed link with developmental disorders. But he didn't do this all by himself. He didn't even do this with Barr and the group Jabs. There were others involved as well. And in our next episode, we're going to talk about the other people that were in on this financial scheme. So this is Bob the Science Guy, signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you very much for stopping by. And make sure you hit that like and subscribe button down there. It's very important that you do that. So we'll see you again soon.